Welcome, I'm Dr. Anthony Sima from Stony Brook University. This is the video supplement to Clinical Medicine Insights Cardiology. The title of today's supplement is Heart Failure, an exploration of recent advances in research and treatment. My section editors include Dr. Allison McClarty, Associate Professor of Cardiothoracic Surgery at Stony Brook University, who trained at Columbia University and the Mayo Clinic. Dr. Hal Skolpicki, MD, PhD, who trained at uh, Chicago Medical School, Yale, and Massachusetts General Hospital, Harvard Medical School. He is the director of the Heart Failure Program at Stony Brook University Hospital and co-director of the Ventricular Assist Device Program with Dr. McClarty. In addition, we have Dr. Michelle Bloom, Assistant Professor of Medicine, who is Mount Sinai trained in heart failure as well. And we have Dr. Rita German, who is Assistant Professor at Hofstra North Shore LIJ School of Medicine at Hofstra University, where she is Assistant Professor of Medicine in Cardiology. She is Stony Brook University and Albert Einstein Fellowship trained in heart failure. Um, I am at Stony Brook University as Adjunct Professor, Department of Technology and Society in the College of Engineering and Applied Science, and Clinical Assistant Professor of Occupational and Environmental Medicine, Preventive Medicine, and Epidemiology at Hofstra North Shore LIJ School of Medicine at Hofstra University. Our first article is by Dr. Allison McClarty, Associate Professor of Cardiothoracic Surgery at Stony Brook University. Her title, article is entitled, Mechanical Circulatory Support and the Role of Left Ventricular Assist Devices in Heart Failure Therapy. This is a very practical guide to the use of left ventricular assist devices as both a bridge to cardiac transplantation as well as destination therapy. Our second article is by Dr. Harsh Patel and colleagues from SUNY Downstate School of Medicine entitled Reversible Cardiomyopathy. Dr. Patel's colleagues include Dr. Rafe Mandani, Dr. Satya Vadi, and Dr. Timothy Vittorio from St. Francis Hospital in Roslyn, New York, as well as Dr. Constantine Cosmos from Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City. Under this rubric of reversible cardiomyopathies, one of the uh, entities uh, discussed includes sympatho-excitation-induced Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. This is largely reversible, but Dr. Patel points out that a recurrence rate of 11.4% still exists. So it's important to understand which cardiomyopathies may be treatable and curable, um, including uh, metabolic storage diseases, uh, whereas others are, may have a recurrence rate. All right. Dr. Patel and colleagues have an additional article in this supplement entitled Complications of Continuous Flow Mechanical Circulatory Support Devices. And in this article, they review some of the side effects and complications, including infection, bleeding, right heart failure, ventricular arrhythmias. Um, and these are important as well as thrombosis because we need to know the risks and benefits of all these procedures to discuss with our patients when recommending these procedures and devices. An additional article is by Dr. Fayad Fahad Gilani from Boston University Medical Center in Massachusetts entitled Percutaneous Mechanical Support in Cardiogenic Shock, a review. With his co-authors, Dr. Sarah Faruqi, Rajiv Dadamani, and Dr. Lewis Gruberg from Stony Brook University, we uh, will learn about um, these percutaneous mechanical support devices and uh, how you use them for life-threatening cardiogenic shock. Um, they go over intraaortic balloon pumps, percutaneous left ventricular assist devices, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation as well. There are some interesting diagrams and they come to some conclusions about the future of percutaneous mechanical support. Our next article in the supplementary issue, Heart Failure, an exploration of recent advances in research and treatment, comes from Columbia University, New York Presbyterian Hospital. Um, these authors include Drs. David Bahar, Drs. Paolo Colombo, Farhana Latif, and Milena Yusef Polskaya. 
the title of this article is Infiltrative Cardiomyopathies. And these authors review all the possibilities of deposition within the cardiac muscle itself. For example, in hemochromatosis, that's potentially reversible and important to know about as a reversible cardiomyopathy. Um, we know that other causes that lead to fibrotic tissue, like Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, are currently being studied for innovative treatments for these diseases. Next, we're going to talk about frailty in heart failure. Our authors, Drs. Dina Goldwater and Sean Penny from Mount Sinai Medical Center in New York City, would discuss the issue regarding frailty, entitled Frailty in Advanced Heart Failure, a Consequence of Aging or Separate Entity. Why is this important? Aging itself does not lead necessarily to frailty, but in the setting of frailty, mortality and morbidity increase in heart failure in particular. So being able to tease out frailty versus aging alone is very important for patient care. Now let's get to the heart of the matter. Our final article is by Drs. Kareen Hamo and Michelle Bloom, getting to the heart of the matter, an overview of cardiac toxicity related to cancer therapy. Anthracyclines, for example, cause dilated cardiomyopathy and associated toxicity. So it's important in the setting of somebody with a cancer to understand the side effects and late effects of treatment on the heart.